did you design Cyrano? The one at Shaw? Yeah. Absolutely. You did, didn't yes. you? Yes. Now that, tell us a bit about that design because that had a, 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 an interesting flamboyant two-dimensional quality, I think. Intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in kind mm -hmm. of characterizing yeah, sort of, it? Sort of, sort, of, sort, of, sort of, yeah. Tell us about that, the design a bit because it was really quite uh, striking. Well, I sometimes think that my best work comes when I'm not given too much time to think about it. And this is with Derek Goldby. And this is with Derek Goldby, but the show was thrust upon us. Uh, Christopher made the decision with Goldby to do the Cyrano de Bergerac. They came to me. Uh, Derek couldn't make up his mind which translation he was going to use, and he ended up using the Rostand, which was the correct one, the proper French you know, uh, one. And Derek he, he is totally bilingual in classical French, and, and of course he, he was the perfect director for it. And I had to have a design in like within days. Um, it's just a, even just a thumbnail design for budgeting purposes because everybody was panicking. This is an expensive show. And do we have the money to actually pull it off? So they wanted to design. So what I did was I looked upon this show as a classic piece of Shakespeare. And that whole design was based on a Shakespearean concept. In other words, entrance right, entrance left, staircase to the upper balcony, center uh, up above, right. center below. You know, all those classic Shakespeare moves of diagonals, diagonals across, going up, going under, coming out, etc. One of the things I had to do to tie it all together was I had to find a way of creating an atmosphere around this theater that suggest that, that actually underscored what was happening, the location. So I used projection system, and I projected on the screen at the back the world of that scene that was actually happening. For example, in the bakery, it was a street in 17th century France, in so-called Paris, and I actually found photographs of Rouen, and I used that because that was the closest thing to the Tudor-type buildings that are all gone now, pretty much. And then, and then for the Battle of Arras, you know, the, the landscape of trees and forest and what have you. And then at the end, the convent. And I had the ruins of a, of a cathedral, a church. And then in following the, the metaphors of the play on how it, it, it progressed through and how Cyrano was coming to his end, was that I, I took the set apart for each scene. The first scene, there's your set. The next scene, a piece of the set flew away. The next scene, with Battle of Arras, I took away all the walls around it, just leaving the skeletal frame of the, of, uh, the stairs were gone. Yeah, no, the stairs were still there, but just the skeletal frame, as if they're in some burnt down, blown up barn somewhere fighting the Spanish. And then at the very end, I took away everything except now just the, the beams, just the, just the pillars of what was once this, this theater, this globe theater, just the pillars left as if this is a ruined cathedral in the middle of a field. Right. And that's where, all the, that's where I discovered the falling leaves. Because when I did this thing with the twilight and the projections, I discovered falling leaves. And uh, that's how we got that last scene, which everybody sort of never has forgotten. Mm -hmm. And how much is the director, is Derek Goldby, in, in the evolution of this design of Concept? Yep. Well, working with Derek Goldby, um, an awful lot. An awful lot. He knows what he wants. He does not necessarily, when it comes to design, know how to get it. Unlike a Christopher Newton, who has an artist's eye and can tell you, I want it to look like a Renoir, or I can, you know, because he knows the painting, or whatever the case may be. He, he knows art, he knows architecture. <clears throat> Derek just knows literature. You know, he's from the Royal Shakespeare Company, etc. He knows literature. And when he looked at my drawings, and he looked at the model, he could see immediately where he was going with it. It was, yes, 
That's it. So you presented him with drawings and model before any discussions with him? We had a little bit of discussion, but no, I did present him with sketches, a sketch first, because I had to get those sketches in, so I showed him that. He saw where it was going, and I don't think he was 100% convinced, but he, saw, but he liked, he knew it was a Shakespearean structure, and a Shakespearean structure was what he was going to direct the play in. He was going to direct it as if he was doing Shakespeare. That, that, that was fairly obvious that when I showed him the designs, he would say, yes, right. that'll work. How it works was up to me. And yes, then I built the model, showed him how it worked, and he was fine with it. And in terms of costuming, you had Heath Lamberts, who is not yes. a romantic body type. No. And Cyrano is romantic and not romantic at the same time. So I remember his hat, is what I remember. Yes, a big of hat. All things, it was really big. Yes, okay. So that, that, was a, that, was, that was the genius of Derek Golby. What I didn't know at the time was that. The original Cyrano in the Rostand, he wrote the play for a little comic figure in France at, at the time. It was written for a little comic figure whose name it escapes me at this moment. And that's why, that's why um, Derek wanted Heath to play it. He wanted a comedian who was small who had this deformity of, a, of a, not so much the long Pinocchio nose that we saw in the American films and what have you, but a crooked nose, as if he got hit on it with a sword, you know, or something, and a distorted nose, so it was bulbous and it was long and it was ugly, not, not cute at all. And it was, that's what created the, the character of, of Heath Cyrano, was it was a bit like it being a rat cornered, you know, you go absolutely vicious. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> vicious when you get cornered. You do not want to meet this guy in a dark alley. But then at the same time, he can be suave and debonair around beautiful women, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that comic element of Heath, his body shape, his acting style, which, you know, you know two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. And so, did you exaggerate his body type? I mean, No, you, you... not at all. Now, here's the interesting thing that happened was, the first costume Heath is five four or was oh, five four five six yes right. the late Heath Lamberts. Um, I had dressed Heath an awful lot. I dressed him in Vancouver in period clothing, what have you. I knew his body, but the one thing that I didn't know about it was that the dialogue between Derry Golby and Heath on the development of his Cyrano was this lean, mean person. He, a comic, yes, and all of that, right. but there was an element about him that was lean and mean, but still funny, still humorous, hence the hat was just a little bit too big, but the costume was cut perfectly for him. And my original design was I had a cape of one uh, ochre color, if I recall, and a lining, etc., etc., because I was looking at this Cyrano you know, as being that flamboyant person. And when the costume was presented to Heath, he looked at it, he said, you know, you mind if I make a suggestion? He said, I said, no, not at all, Heath. I've known you for years. Of course you can. He said, I'd like to be a little bit leaner and meaner and simpler. He said, not black, all black, but the suggestion of a darker person above what have you. So that's why I came out with the color, which was almost the color of your shirt. That, that very dark brown, with some accents of black on it, etc., and some accents of little light on it, with the dark hat and the feather, etc., etc. So it was that darker figure we wanted. And he was right. He was right. The way they were playing it and doing it, it was absolutely correct decision to make. My costume design would have not helped him at all. 